Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD, and yes, uh, we have a new video. Uh, can you run MDT within Windows 10? Uh, I like to look at some of my comments, and I do reply to some of my comments that you guys, uh, you know, attach to a lot of my videos. And this particular one kind of interests me a lot because the majority of all my MDT stuff are done within a Windows Server environment, right? But what if you don't have the budget to purchase a Windows Server operating system? All you have is a Windows 10 or Windows 7. So the real question is, can you use MDT within a Windows 10 environment, right? So to keep it nice and short, yes, you could, but there's a lot of limitations because you can't really pixie boot and all that good stuff. So I'm actually gonna show you guys. So uh, I built a Windows 10 uh, virtual machine within my Hyper-V. If I go to my start menu, click run, and within run, type in WinVER, and you hit okay, you're gonna get this dialog box, and I'm running everything within a Windows 10 version 1809 environment, okay? From there, the first thing that you need to do is open up your favorite browser. I opened up Chrome, and I did a search of Windows 10 ADK, and I also did Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. What you want to do is just download all the files. For your ADK, you're downloading three files, your ADK setup, your ADK WinPE, and your WSIM zip file. And for your Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, download the version that you want to download. You got 64-bit or 86-bit. For this video, I did 64-bit. Locate all your files, and the first one that we need to install is your ADK, so select it. And once you select it, right click on it and run it as an administrator. You're going to get the user account control, hit yes. You're gonna get this right here. I'm gonna drop it in the default location, which is the C drive, click next. For this, I normally hit no and then hit next. I set the license and terms. I let all the features as the default, hit install. It's gonna start installing and you're done, close it. Go back into your downloads folder or where you drop your files, highlight your WinPE setup, right click on it, run it as an administrator, hit yes for the user account control, uh, specify the location, I left it as the default which is C drive, click next, again I hit no on this, hit next, accept the license and terms, hit install, it's going to start doing its thing and you're completed. Boom. Next thing that we need to do is a WISM. And you're probably saying to yourself, Bernardo, why are you why are you talking so fast? I've done these videos so much for you guys. Uh, so check out the installation part. This is pretty a quick one. Again, the answer is you are able to install um, MDT within a Windows 10 environment, right? So the next thing is WSIM. So we want to right click on that and we need to extract it. And from there, you're going to hit extract and it's gonna extract the files. I like to select the readme file and open that up. Within the readme file, it actually gives you the two commands that the batch file is going to do for you. I don't like running the batch file because I feel like it's too fast and I also, in my mind, I feel like the batch file didn't really do anything. So what I like to do is run these two commands manually. So from here, I, I copy the path of where you know the image cat is located and I right click on my start menu and I'm gonna run Windows PowerShell as admin. I'm gonna hit yes for the user account control and I'm gonna do a CD and, and paste the path of where that WSIM 1903 folder is located and I'm gonna hit enter. Then I'm gonna copy and paste the first X copy and hit enter and boom. I like to get that notification that says one file copy. Right, and then we're gonna copy and paste the second command and hit enter. It gives me that confirmation stating that something was copied on the batch file when you run in as an administrator. It goes so fast, you don't really know if anything was copied. So doing it this way manually kind of makes me feel like it worked. Now, next thing we need to do is install MDT. So locate your MSI file, right click on it and just hit install and just follow the prompts. From here, just hit next, accept the license and terms, hit next here. Uh, I left everything as a default within the C drive. You are able to relocate it to something else. Hit next here. Uh, I normally hit, I don't want to join. And hit next, install. You're gonna receive the user account control. Hit yes here. Once everything is done, you're going to get the dialog box stating that it is completed. Just hit finish. Click on your start menu and locate your deployment workbench. Open it up. 
Again, you're going to get a user account control, hit yes, and it's gonna load up. First thing that we need to do is select your deployment share folder, right click on it, new deployment share. Uh, the share path is really up to you. I'm gonna leave it as the default, which is the C drive. Uh, and then the share name is the same or the description for the name. Again, I left everything as the default. Uh, you are able to change the options from here, summary, and boom. It's really simple to create a deployment share. And then hit finish. Now, next thing that we need to do is import an operating system. So it's basically the same thing that I've done with all my videos. Right click on your operating system node. I like to create folders, but because I was just testing this out, I just did right click on the operating system node, import an operating system, pick full set of source. Uh, I picked the source directory, which was my D drive. Hit next here. Left the destination directory name as is. Hit next. Summary next. It's going to start doing this thing, importing the content within the D drive locally to your MDT server. And it's going to confirm it's done. Once you have your operating system, most likely, I'm not going to go over uh, adding apps or drivers. It's just really simple. Uh, we're just going to do is highlight the task sequence, right click on it, create a new task sequence, give it a sequence ID, a name, and a comment. It's up to you. This is the following that I gave. Hit next. We're going to do a standard client task sequence and for selecting the operating system, pick your poison. So I pick what operating system I want to deploy within this task sequence, hit next, specify a product key, hit next. For the OS settings, you're going to change it for your environment and then hit next, provide an admin password and confirm it, hit next, nice little summary, next, it's going to start doing this thing and confirm, you're done. Now. The next thing you want to do is right click on the primary MDT node and just update the deployment share. Get the nice little wizard, hit next, next, and it's going to start updating uh, the deployment share and it's going to complete, which is good. Now you can't really pixie boot within a Windows 10 environment. Well, you could if you have a WDS server within your environment, uh, you can actually pixie boot. But if you don't have any servers or you just want to play around with this, what you could do is Within your Windows 10 environment, you could go inside your advanced configuration node and on your media node, you're going to right click on it and click on new media, provide a media path. Uh, I created a folder within the desktop called ISO. I selected that and I hit next and I hit next again. It's going to start doing its thing and it's going to confirm. Boom. For this to work correctly, for you to actually deploy your operating system, you have to create an ISO and then that ISO burn it into a flash drive and then you know boot inside that flash drive to push out your operating system. If you have a Windows Server environment, you can install WDS and use the Pixie Boot um, option and do it that route. Once you customize everything within your environment, right click your media and pick update media content and it's gonna start updating everything. Once it's completed, you're good to go. You're going to, you're going to go inside that ISO folder and you're going to see the light touch media or whatever name you provide it, right? That is the file that you would take and burn it inside your flash drive or your external hard drive. Take that flash drive, hook it up to your laptops or PCs and boot inside that flash drive to boot into your deployment, your offline deployment to push out your operating system and your applications and drivers and whatever you did within that environment. So in short, you are able to install MDT within a Windows 7 environment. You're just going to be limited in doing pixie booting options. The best route is just create an ISO, burn into a flash drive, and then do it that way. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Leave comments right below. Make sure to hit that like button as well as subscribe. Share out the video, and i catch you guys on the next one. Peace.